I think most people could use more space and more stillness in their day. Theravada Buddhism, forest Buddhism, forest tradition is not like an evangelical, really, tradition. First and foremost, in the earliest scriptures of the Pali Canon, the Buddha was just talking about individual practitioners practicing to kind of purify their own minds, to cleanse the mind of greed and envy and jealousy and hatred and anger and all the flavors of these emotions which are less than beautiful and centering our lives towards this goal of, of transcendence to awakening. What's so meaningful about this tradition and this teaching, it's one of the most ancient models in, in humanity. It's been continuing for about 2,500 years. And instead of becoming less and less relevant, it's in some ways as relevant as it's ever been. You take these ancient robes, this ancient form, and you place it into modern Seattle and people understand there's an archetypal quality to it and a, a genuine hunger people have for what it represents, I think, and what has been largely lost today in terms of a direction towards transcendence and of purifying the heart towards a state of selflessness, of generosity, of, of giving, um, and of awakening, which I think we all at some level intuit that we're capable of. As Theravada forest monks, we don't use money. We don't touch money. So uh, Clear Mountain Monastery is a totally transaction-free space, totally based on dana, which is the principle of generosity. Which was the Buddha's way of making the monks not be able to cut themselves off in a spiritual cocoon. So every day we interact with society and with the wider community. Every morning I'm at daily alms round and people can come down and offer food and if they give food in support of the practice then we can receive it. They get to speak to the monks and have a chance to speak with one another as well. It's sort of this daily interaction with, with something deeper in their lives. The Buddha talked about five different bases for liberation, vimuti ayatana, and one of them is meditation. That's certainly a basis of liberation, which many people see. It's a lot of people's dharma doors. You enter into a monastery, to a meditation center, looking for this tranquility and this stillness, and a monastery and a retreat center can provide that. The vision of Clear Mountain is a community of monks who would be living uh, near Seattle and practicing uh, the monastic life and helping to create a space where the wider community of practitioners could come and have a place of practice, spend time and uh, find refuge from all the ups and downs of life in the modern world. We'll have morning and evening group meditations and it'll be a quiet place the currency of a monastery is generosity. The monastics are sharing our experience and the teachings and lay people are giving their time and their experience and it really just becomes this totally fluid, interconnected support. Everyone who comes to a monastery, they create the monastery. It's not just the monks creating the monastery, it's, it's everyone who comes, adds a little bit to the monastery. And if people are inspired by monastics, by the Buddhist path, by a path of meditation and calm and insight and stilling and self-acceptance, then we provide a place for that.